Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup where we cover Worlds 2022, Group Stage Day 5, the end of Group A. Um, we have the games here and then the preview of the games for Group B tomorrow. Uh, down in the description you'll see three links, Twitter, uh, Discord, YouTube memberships. Um, Twitter, follow me there, I post all my links there for my videos. Um, Discord, join us, we BS about the game as I go on. Obviously with these games going on, we are discussing the games in the chat if you'd like to join in. Um, and uh, lastly, YouTube memberships, $2 supports me. You get a badge in the comment section. Uh, $10 tier, you get extra content, including a video I already put out that has the predictions for who I think wins these games tomorrow. Um, standard is I put out my predictions for my... Um, the predictions for League of Legends games I put out on the members-only videos, as well as NFL, American football content, fantasy football, I put out a video earlier today as well, and I'll have one um, out Saturday. So, um, that's monthly, $3 and $10, not one-time fee. Now, um, today's game. So, uh, yesterday, if you watched my sneak peek, I'm not too fond of Fnatic. I had a couple more dislikes than I usually do, but I don't really care. Um... I think that uh, it was right that they went 0-3 today. Um, I really do. I think that that was uh, just. I think that was just. So, Fnatic and C9. C9 finally get a win. NA goes 1-17 at Worlds, which is fine with me. Um, Got a win. So, why did C9 win? Well, they put Fudge on Orn. Gave Maokai, however, which I have no idea why Blabber does not play Maokai. Um, it boggles my mind why he doesn't, and um, it boggles my mind when anybody doesn't play it. Especially at this point, we know it has been meta for a while now, so you should have been spamming it so you could play it. Um, now they won. Jensen, 8, 2, and 7, 31% of damage. Berserker, 5, 1, and 8 at 80 carry. Humanoid, 1, 5, and 2, 34% of damage. For Fnatic and upset, 1, 1, and 0. Um, so, yeah. I mean, they had Jensen on Azoriana and, uh, just cruised. I mean, really did just cruise. They, uh, I mean, just was a clean win. Really clean win. Um, you know, and I was I was happy about it. You know, they were ahead for a long time, and it, everyone's having fun in the chat and the Discord about it. All the C9 fans, North American fans that are, uh, you know, been waiting for just one win, and it got to a point where it's like, okay, well, uh, we'll wait until they get the Nexus down, right? Because uh, who knows if they actually blow it up or they throw this and they end up doing it. Fnatic looked like crap all day, and uh, today was, I mean, uh, this game was no exception. Um, Razork. Definitely struggling. Wonder struggling. I think he was on. Um, I think he was on Maokai in both of the first two games. To be honest with you, and he struggled in both, um, which made Maokai look balanced, which was uh, something I didn't think would happen out of Fnatic, and they did it. Uh, Fnatic then, like I said yesterday, this game was going to decide how Fnatic and C9 were going to approach today. C9 win. Maybe they got some hopium. Can go the rest of the way. Improbable. But hope you, I'm right. Fnatic, if they win, puts them in a position where they have momentum going into this game. But if they lost, all momentum's out the window. All of a sudden, they lost to C9. NA sucks. How do you lose to C9? Well, you could tell Humanoid was mental boom in game one. That only continued in game two as T1 would win. Guma, 406, 26% of damage. Faker, 6, 3, and 1 at uh, mid lane on a Silas. He lost lane big time against Humanoid, but that was more relevant in the mid to late game. Upset, 0-1-3, 32% of damage. Wonder, 3-3-2 three, three, and two on a Maokai. Upset, another trend throughout the day, and we'll get to it here. He is a KDA player through and through, and, um, well, I think at the end of the day, he goes 1-3-4, and four, like, across all the games. Like, okay, well, you don't want to die, but you don't get any kills. You don't do anything for your team. So what are you? Like, you're, are you even playing? You're just, you're just taking up farm. Um, dealing damage, but not getting... I mean, I guess it's bad luck. You're dealing all that damage. You'd think you'd be getting last hits and things like that to get kills, but he's not. Um, but Humanoid in the mid to late game, not as effective. And, uh, well, they lost. You know, Faker playing good, Guma playing good, Karia on the Yumi in this one, I believe, played very, very well, if I recall correctly. 
Um, Carrier had a great day. If you, I think all three of his, honestly, um, between these two games, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he went, went like 1-1-34. One, one and 34. I think that might be right. Honestly, between the three games, he might have went like 3-1-42. and 42. Carrier proving that he's uh, second best player in the world behind Chovy. Um, just fabulous performance out of T1 as they close it out today. Um, C9 and EDG. C9 needed this. And despite learning, if we put Fudge on a tank top, we have a chance. They gave him Aatrox in this one. And by giving him Aatrox in that game, Flandre played Piora. Viper, 805, 30% of damage. Scout, 605 in mid. Jensen, 03 and 1, 41% of damage in mid lane. Zven, 1, 7 and 0. If you're in the player pool in Discord, Sven definitely right now has the least amount of points out of anybody. And by that, I mean he has like negative 13 and a half or something. Like, absolutely awful. Um, he fed his face off. I think he had a Renata in this one. Yeah. Or do you have Renata in that one? No, it was this one because then we asked for, we were joking about a pause. It was that one. Just like, come on. Come on, man. Like, and then Victor in mid for Jensen. Victor has sucked all tournament long. I'm pretty sure Victor, def I mean, I'm not pretty sure. I would almost bet it has a negative win rate at Worlds. Like that champion stinks. Now, EDG just outclassed him. Viper, class of his own. Scout, much better. JJ did work. Flandre won his lane. Uh, Mako still looks very good. So C9 lose a game. We expected them really to lose, but it would have been nice if they won. Fnatic and EDG. So now EDG coming off of a win like this. Fnatic um, in a position now where um, while well, their backs are against the wall, right? Uh, EDG win. Viper 3-1-14, 36% of damage. Um, JJ 7-0-10 oh, on a Sejuani. Um, most fed player in the game through the laning phase. He had more gold than anybody on a Sejuani in the jungle, which is pretty damn crazy to think about humanoid 020 35% of damage i believe on a victor mid victor upset 01 and 1 once again upset not wanting to play to die and risk anything for his team so he ends up um going home going home and i don't really know if you can go home after going 1 3 and 4 and say to yourself i did everything i could um i really don't but um, that is what it is. Now with EDG, won their two games handily. Um, definitely bot lane doing great work. I mean, EDG all around looking very good. Um, and Fnatic just not, right? Um, really just kind of short work for that game. This game, I honest to God, I'll be honest with you, I barely watched this game. Why? It had no, no bearing at all. It didn't matter. Um, so if T1 lost this game, they win this game. They still won tiebreaker 2-0 over, over EDG. If both ended up four and two, if T1 lost this one, this, so if they lose and win and win, they win the tiebreaker. If they win this and then EDG win this, there is a, um, EDG win. Right? Because they were both four and one. Both four and one. If they were three and two, they win. They win the tiebreaker 2 0. If they were to um, win this and go up 4 1 in EDG or 4 1, EDG win. Four it's not even worth the time to really do mental gymnastics. T1 and C9, this game didn't matter. C9 literally um, joke draft. They had uh, Blabber on Belveth. I don't know why he waited till now. Maybe he was inting and didn't care about Belveth. Um, although, I would argue Belveth was better than Xin Zhao. Now, C9 also. Zven played Heimerdinger. Well, that might have been the best champ he's played all, all the tournament. Uh, Zeus, 355, 31% of damage on a Jace. Further proving Jace is actually not very good right now. Guma, 10 3 So Guma, great game. Jensen, 5 2 30% of damage. 
on a Akali and then uh, Blabber 2, 4, and 4. But like I said, I didn't really watch this game because it really didn't matter all that much in the grand scheme of things. Um, with the way C9 drafted, they took it as a joke, so I did as well. Um, if you're new to the channel, when teams int, like literally, like when the game doesn't matter, I'm not giving it the time of day. EDG and T1, this game really mattered, both for 4 and 1. Um, so actually, yeah, it did. This game didn't matter if T1 needs to win this game no matter what. So, yeah, so that game didn't matter. Um, T1 win, um, they crushed them. Just like how EDG beat, uh, well, no, Fnatic beat T1, didn't they? Yeah, the, of course, it's what we've been going through, right? So T1 just beat the crap out of EDG. Zeus, 10, 2, and 3 on a Gangplank. Caria, 0, 1, and 19 on a Soraka. This was a big pick. Viper 242 on Ophelio, Scout 364 on a Lissandra. The Lissandra is exactly why this was a big pick. The Soraka stops the Lissandra from being effective. It is a counter. Um, all throughout the year, we've been I've been seeing Lissandras. MSI saw Lissandras. Nobody, I mean, I know the meta has shifted, but I, I really don't recall. I mean, obviously, I don't edit these videos, and I don't remember every patch. And I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to say, well, Soraka was buffed at this time, so that changes things and this and that. And it's like, well, I'm not going to have that offhand. But if Soraka hasn't been touched between then and now, it's weird that nobody was willing to at least try it. Um, because it is such a such a counter to Lissandra. Um, so, Caria played a massive role in this one. Um, all around, T1 just beat the hell out of him. Wasn't even close. EDG, two seed by far, um, losing a T1. And now we know the two teams coming out of Group A, the two expected teams. Um, I know I had C9 in my predictions, a little bit of hopium, uh, hoping for the repeat of 2017. That did not happen. Preview for tomorrow, Group B. G2, EG, start us off. Uh, G2 won the first time. Broken Blade, 6 0 and 6 on a Fiora. Yankos versus Inspired is what I want to watch. You'll see Inspired's listed on all three EG games in here. That's because if Inspired does not 1v9, and play the best day of League of Legends of his life, EG are not going to get out of this group. He needs to actually play like he is the best player in the world. So, um, Yankos' job is to make that not happen. So, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and, I mean, it'd be nice if EG won a game against G2 in 2022, but, I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, EG and JDG, so, just like this day, we got to think about this here. So, G2, they need this win. G2 are a legitimate threat to getting out of the group, right? Um, by comparison to EG. Um, so, G2 need that game. If G2 don't get that game, they're rolling into this game. After losing that one, damn, feeling like those guys did. Now, there's a little bit of a break, so maybe they'll feel a little bit better. Maybe they can, you know, brush it off a bit more. But EG win it. EG all of a sudden are going into the JDG game with Hopium. JDG won the last time. Kanavi 12-1-9 and nine on a Viego. Inspired versus Kanavi. Like I said, Inspired has to play his ass off. Kanavi, on the other hand, a very, very good player. The best jungler in the world, in my opinion, coming into this tournament. And he's playing like it. He is cracked. 3-6-9 in top lane. Uh, Yagao in mid lane over Jojo. Bot lane is JDG favored. This is all JDG favored. Um, Dom Juan and G2. Dom Juan won. Um, Showmaker 804 in mid. Showmaker and Caps. The last time they played, I think this was the highlighted matchup. Um, obviously, Caps is G2's best player. So he has to be the one to take over in this one. He's the one that's even close to his, um, you know, um, opposition and role. Um, there, you can definitely argue that Caps at times can play better than Showmaker. So um, that's what they're going to need in this one. Uh, Yankos really doesn't have it in him over Canyon unless Canyon ints again like he did on Maokai. Um, top lane, I mean, Nugri always has a potential to int, but um, I don't know if he ints hard enough for Broken Blade to beat him. Um, G2 and JDG after that. JDG won last time. Hope 5-1-8. and eight. Targamus and Missing is the matchup to watch. Targamus has to keep Flacken alive to keep Hope from getting ahead. Um, it's kind of like one of those things. If, if Targamus can play well enough to keep Flacken ahead, that will mean that Hope and Missing aren't getting ahead. And um, maybe they have a chance in bot lane. Um, 
Caps versus Yagao. Uh, Caps, just like how he can outplay Showmaker at times, I think he's definitely capable of outplaying Yagao. So uh, that is a thing. However, Yankos versus uh, Kanavi, I think that you have to ban out Kanavi's carry, op carry options and uh, hope for the best. Because I don't think Yankos really doesn't have uh, that carry in him that Kanavi has and Inspired for that matter. Yes, Yankos has beaten Inspired literally every best of one, but um, we do probably really, I mean, it's not even probably. You see that Inspired and Yankos are not the same kind of jungler. Um, EG and Damwon, um, there's potential for EG, um, Int in this one, if they're 0 and 5, um, or 1 and 4 and out of it. Um, the fact of the matter is, uh, they might just draft for fun. They might have an NA buff after being, uh, eliminated. That's a thing too, where teams sometimes play better when they have nothing to play for. Damwon 1, Nugri 6, 2 and 2. I will say that out of the three games so far for EG, their game against Damwon was their best one. They put Nugri in a hole. They clearly had a, um, a plan, and they were executing on it. Now, in the mid to late game, the plan fell apart, and they lost. But compared to the other two games, they played a lot better in that one. Um, inspired in Canyon. Maybe Canyon plays Maokai again and plays terribly. JDG and Damwon to finish us off. Just like this game, this might have a lot of implications. Both teams might be 4-1 and one going into it. It might matter a lot, right? JDG won the first time they played. Uh, Hope, 9-0 and 7. 3-6-9 in Nugri is the matchup. Now, um, last time they played, I blame it mostly on Canyon, his Maokai. Uh, I look back to the game. He had, out of 13 ultimates, 2 kills and 1 50-50 smite on his 13 Maokai ultimates, which is pretty damn awful when you think about how potent that ultimate is. So that's a combination of him using it at poor times and the team not being coordinated around it. So um, if that doesn't happen again, I think Dom won't have a really good chance at winning this game. I think it is a toss up. Um, now, my matchup to watch, 369 and Nugri. 369, obviously a better player than Nugri, but I think Nugri can keep up with them um, on his best day. So Nugri has to play well, pretty much. Nugri cannot int this game away. Um, if he does, they will be in a in a pickle especially he um i imagine 369 was really happy seeing zayas put up double digits on um gangplank in a must win game because i'm sure he's just chopping at the bit to be able to play uh gangplank so we'll see tomorrow um how those go but thank you for watching i uh, really appreciate it subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this sort of content i do daily league of legends content like the video if you like it share it uh Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a YouTube member, and once again, thank you for watching.